I thank the member. The House comes to the debate on the Budget Policy Statement 2016. David Bennett. I move that the House take note of the report of the Finance and Expenditure Committee on the Budget Policy Statement 2016. Thank you, Mr Speaker. It's great to be able to talk around the budget, um, a document that shows the future of New Zealand going forward into 2016 and beyond, and it draws on Treasury forecasts in the half-yearly update. And it looks at how we are managing public finances to responsibly deliver a surplus to New Zealanders and reduce debt. It makes sure that we get a productive and strong economy and it delivers better value for public services and supports the rebuild of Christchurch. It is a budget that shows prudent economic management in the most difficult of international times. And it shows that this government can deliver the best environment for New Zealand businesses to succeed and prosper. We are delivering the stable conditions for economic prosperity in New Zealand. The government made a surplus of $414 million in the 2014-15 year. We made this surplus in the most, after the most severe economic recession since the Great Depression and rebuilding our second biggest city. With a debt of $18.4 billion deficit in 2010-11, we have now turned that into surplus of $414 million. That is a great achievement for any country, and especially a small country the New Zealand economy represents. There is a weaker outlook going forward due to uh, lower commodity prices and the international situation, and I will come back to that later. But let's have a look at some of those statistics. Real GDP growth, 3.2% in 2015, and, and forecast 2.1% in 2016. That is, we are running slightly higher now at 2.5%. That is great news for New Zealand. The unemployment rate, actual rate in 2015 of 5.8% and a forecast in 2016 at 6.5%. We are running below last year's actual at 5.3%. If you look at CPI, the inflation rate, 0.3%, the actual for 2015, and the forecast at 1.4%. Low inflation means low interest rates for New Zealanders, and we have record low inflation in New Zealand. Wage growth is growing up. It has gone up 2.1% in 2015 and is forecast to go up 2.6% in 2016. The current account balance is at negative 3.5% and is scheduled to go up to minus 4.8%. That may sound bad, but when you consider it with a current account deficit under Labor of 7.9%, that is an improvement for the New Zealand economy. The total Crown operating um, balance before gains and losses at 0.2 per cent is forecast to go to a negative 0.2 per cent. And now net Crown debt at 25.2 per cent is forecast to go to 26.9 per cent, still keeping New Zealand's debt at reasonable levels for this country going forward. We need to compare this with the country we inherited, a country in recession, a country which had interest rates at around 11 per cent, a country with a current account deficit of 7.9 per cent, and a country that had permanent deficits and debt rising to over 60 per cent of GDP under the figures that the Labor Party would have delivered for New Zealand. And the opposition over there will talk today around agriculture endlessly in their debates. They will say that they care for farmers. As a farmer, that, is a, that it hurts us to see the opposition actually come into this parliament and say they care for farmers. Not once have they ever supported anything for farmers in this parliament in the last term. And they have no intention of supporting anything in the future. All those New Zealand farmers that are listening today do not believe what you will hear from the other side. Do not believe their rhetoric of how they suddenly care for farmers and they are there for farmers in their time of need. Because believe me, the Labor Party never has, never will and never can be there for anybody that is in the rural sector and any economy that is based around the rural sector. And let's have a look. There are 
lower payouts coming to for dairy farmers this year. There's no, yet nobody's denying that, and it will be extremely tough times for New Zealand dairy farmers. They will be extremely tough, and New Zealanders will face um, greater impacts from this as it flows through into our economy. But as the Minister of Finance said today, in the late 80s, and similar things happened in the sheep and beef industry. And every industry will go through ups and downs, and they have to be able to reconcile that with their, their debt, their income, and their ability to service that debt going forward. So all businesses do face challenges, and this is a time of immense challenge for the New Zealand dairy industry. Let's not forget that at all. And it's not just a Fonterra issue. A lot of people will blame Fonterra and say this is a Fonterra issue, it's a problem of having a structure around Fonterra. It is not a Fonterra issue. Open country suppliers will have the same problem of lower payout to them as well. In fact, they have got a bigger problem than Fonterra shareholders because at least Fonterra shareholders have a shareholding in that company which gives them a greater asset. Open country dairy farmers are probably the most at risk because their only asset is their land and their cows. They have no shareholding asset in the company and they do not have that buffer um, should the banks be looking at their properties. And I think that is something that we need to take into account. It is a whole dairy industry issue, not just a Fonterra issue. In saying that, Fonterra is the biggest player and New Zealand dairy farmers do look for them for leadership. And this is a time where Fonterra can step up and show that leadership. They have done that earlier in the season by providing some extra funding through a capital mechanism for their shareholders and, uh, and indicating that they will have another capital mechanism later in the uh, year to help farmers as well, or some other mechanism through the, using their assets. So it is time for Fonterra to actually help and deliver to their farmers, but it is not just a solely a Fonterra issue. And New Zealanders need a government and a parliament that understands and supports farmers and not a parliament that tries to take advantage of their time of weakness and their time of difficulty to make political capital. And that is what is happening on the other side of the House. Because I ask the members of this House and I ask the public that are watching here today, when was the last time that the opposition parties supported the government's actions in water reform? When was the last time the opposition parties supported our reforms in the RMA? When was the last time that the opposition parties support, supported the free trade agreements like the TPPA? And when was the last time that the opposition and parties actually supported New Zealand dairy farmers by voting for them in this parliament rather than saying one thing and doing another? And farmers don't want that. They don't want opposition parties saying one thing and doing another because they can see through that and see the reality of the situation. Mr Speaker, let's look what would happen if the opposition parties were in parliament. You would, there would no, be no free trade agreements. There would be no trading the TPPA. Oh no, the New Zealand First Party wants to do trade with Russia and dairy products, but it doesn't want to do a TPPA. So let me understand that one. So FMA, uh, the, 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 the um, RMA reforms would be off the table. There'd be no chance of RMA reforms from the opposition. The opposition would not support the government in RMA reforms. The opposition would have higher taxes on farmers. They would be taxing farmers to a higher level to pay for unrealistic um, election promises that they've already made around uh, payments to students, for example, and the more to come during the election campaign. That unrealistic spending would mean higher interest rates for New Zealand farmers. The biggest problem that New Zealand dairy farmers would face coming out of this room is if there was an incompetent government here delivering poor economic situation and a poor budget that would lead to higher interest rates. And that's exactly what the opposition would deliver. New Zealand farmers are smart, they're hardworking, and they will deliver for this country as they have in the past. We do not need a patronising opposition that does not care for farmers to come into this parliament and suddenly show that they have some ambitions. And the opposition over there 
will yell and scream all they like. In the next debates you're going to hear from the opposition members will be how under Labor there would have been a diversified economy and how under Labor there would have been none of these problems. Well, I say to you and I say to the members of this House, New Zealand farmers would have been worse off with those guys and New Zealand farmers deliver and will deliver in the future and we do not need the patronising attitude from the opposition at this time.